How's it going, everybody? Rye Rye here today, and we are here with another episode of our Summer Rebuild series. I hope you guys are enjoying it. It really seems like you are. I'm loving the comments and all of the suggestions. I have a list here on my phone of all the teams I have to do. Uh, and in today's episode, we're doing a team that is very hotly requested. You guys have been spamming this in the comments, um, so I could not ignore it. Uh, any longer. You guys want to see me do Philadelphia, and I'm excited because this is one that's uh, honestly intrigued me. So I'm very curious to see what I can do with it uh, and where we can go. Um, so first things first, let's double check the lines. Um, uh, and we got Jiver, Giroux, Voracek, Lindblom. Oh, I like the fact that we got Couturier too. I really do like that, uh, the fact that he's uh, an 88. That's a really, really great thing. Without morale on, he'll be just fine playing on that second line. Um, Nolan Patrick here is a third line scoring forward. I know Pitlick. All right, so we got a plus three on this third line with uh, Lawton, Hayes, and Pitlick. Hayes' contract is pretty bad, but he fits the scheme so well. Uh, I'm like, I'm liking him at an 85. Um, Pitlick also fits fantastically here. Uh, he's really probably driving this line up. Uh, do any of these guys fit the third line any better than the rest of them? So Raffle fits maybe better than Lawton. Uh, I don't know. Scott Lawton is a two-way forward with average stats. Raffle is a two-way forward with less, less, less good average. Uh, um, Nolan Patrick, I would like to get him maybe. Oh, for Lindblom. So if we play Nolan Patrick there, Oscar Lindblom can then play on this second line. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, can any of these guys take face-offs? Actually, Scott Lawton can. So Scott Lawton will be my fourth line center. We've got Lindblom, uh, Hayes, and... Pitlick, I almost said Taze, it's not. Uh, Travis Konechny, there is another center. Jesus, we have so many centers. He is really good, though. Like, he's going to put up mad points next to Couturier. Uh, and then I need to get a goal scorer for this line. I guess Konechny would be considered that goal scorer. If we take a look at the defense, it's pretty, you know, young. Some of it is hitting its prime. Guys like Myers, Sanheim, Provorov, still got some room to go. Uh, and then we've got Gosh Spear here, uh, who's a great offensive defenseman. Is Niskanen defensive defenseman or is he two-way? If we do that, okay, so we're not getting any other bonuses. We do get a bonus if we move Sanheim up, a plus three. I think I'll do that. And Braun, Justin Braun is a defensive defenseman. Uh, and then there is that. So, yeah, it, we're not getting any kind of bonuses. So I will keep Provorov on that middle pairing. He's medium elite, top four defenseman. I think that'd be nice to spread that wealth out there. And then in goal, we've got uh, one of my favorite goaltenders, Starter Hart here, 84 overall. So things are looking good for the future here, guys. We got our goaltenders locked up. We got a lot of young defensemen. Uh, and we just basically need to fill out the bottom six, I'd say. Maybe get another winger. If we just take a quick look at our lines here again. Probably a third line winger, although Pitlick fits super well. Probably Somebody in the bottom six, I think. A second line uh, winger instead of Patrick, maybe. I do want him to grow. Um... But if Nolan Patrick could turn into somebody really sick, uh, like a first line forward, I would not be opposed to trading Nolan Patrick away. Like you guys know, this series is I have three uh, years to win the Stanley Cup. If I can do it in those three years, then great. That's a W. If I don't, that's an L. Um, so far, we're one of two. Vancouver was a success and Montreal was an L. So let me you know in the comments, any other team that you guys want to see me do um, next on the list is Arizona and Florida, as well as a potential expansion created team. So those are three ones that are coming next. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we have in the system as far as trade value. Nolan Patrick has got a ton of trade value. He's got a lot of trade value. He is a power forward though, and he fits, he's never gonna fit the first line, but if we can get him to grow, he could be very, very solid on an EL. He's, his contract's expiring. Question is, do we have, do we have him locked up to a contract extension and what kind of extension is it uh if we take a quick look here we'll take a look at all expiring and nolan patrick's at the top he wants a contract extension what is he gonna want oh wow he wants three years at 3.6 i may just do that now before he jumps i might try and get him at two years at two and a half million because that because that would be the end of the series here uh there we go and then in gold we have expiring thank goodness uh, Carter Hart is not expiring until the last year, so that'll, that'll be really good to see. We'll have to double check on how uh, Brian Elliott does, but for once, I think Philadelphia has a goaltender, which is really awesome to see. Uh, as far as the rest of the roster, not a lot of expiring contracts that we have to worry about. Lindblom here, um, he, I mean, he's solid, he's good. I would like to give him a contract if, if possible. 
Uh, we'll see how he sims, though. Uh, I don't want him to get too good, though. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it doesn't look like we have any depth pieces to move. Let me do a real quick thing and see what would teams give us for Nolan Patrick. If I did find a trade and click Nolan Patrick, uh, what is what are teams across the NHL offering us? And hopefully we actually find some trades and it's not just like, oh, sorry, there's no trades even though it's taken this long. So if, in the meantime, let me take a sip of my Tim Hortons coffee. Oh, you guys can't see that because it's all it's it's a green mug. Ah, uh, Nashville. Okay, they want to give us nothing. That's not what I want. So we're going to see if we can get Nolan Patrick to grow. He's still going to have a ton of value next season. He'll be on a $3 million contract then. Um, so I'm going to leave the lines as they are. You guys have seen all that we're going to do at the start. Usually you, I sometimes I either blitz it and just completely change everything or I don't change anything. But I think I'd like to check in at the trade deadline and see if, if, if we're doing well. I'll check in and say, hey, guys, we're doing well. If we're not, that's when I might make a trade. If we're not doing good enough or if I think this is our season, I'll go all in already. Um, actually, what I should do is find a trade now for our first round pick and see what we can get for our first, which has a decent amount of value. Uh, a second in Schnarr, and that's it. Okay, so by the deadline, uh, we should be able to get a lot better players for that pick. So I will see you guys at the deadline. So this trade deadline is going to mean something, guys. Uh, it just flipped by there but as you can see we are third in the division six points um in the in the playoffs so pretty safe in the playoffs four points ahead of uh uh the Leafs uh and with a game in hand on them for a wild card spot but I'm really setting my sights on the top of the division here guys Claude Giroux's having a great season I wonder who is not is there a spot we need to upgrade potentially uh is Nolan Patrick doing okay uh Nolan Patrick is a minus five is he he hasn't grown at all either um Travis Konechny is a minus 11, and yeah, so that line really seems to be a minus with Kateria. Okay, so it is that. Uh, the first line's killing it, but Myers and Braun, maybe I just need to get a bottom, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go after um, a bottom six defenseman. Uh, how, are, how is our goaltenders doing? Uh, is Carter Hart? Carter Hart's having a great season. Wow. Uh, I usually don't see goalies have this kind of season, but that is a really good season for a simmed goalie uh, in NHL 20. NHL 20 goalies just... Just happen to do their thing uh, differently. Uh, but as far as defensemen, it really is that bottom defensive pairing. So I think we're going to go out and maybe try and find a, uh, a, a third uh, pairing defenseman. Just somebody down there to help really solidify it. And we are now listed as a contender, which is great to see. Hopefully Nolan Patrick can start to grow because, I mean, look, it, he's already started to fall off. Maybe um, a fall off in value. A little bit less value than he had at the beginning of the season. Maybe that's just because of his contract. Maybe that's because he's only got 24 points in 62 games on the second line. The team is playing too well for me to really jumble things up, though. Um, you know, our third line, let's go ahead and take a quick look at, like, a guy. Uh, where's Kevin Hayes? He's probably at the bottom here. There we go. Kevin Hayes, he's got twenty or 32 points in 62 games on the third line. I'm fine with that. That's, you know, 40-point pace, right? Uh, yeah, he's on, like, a 40-point pace. So I'll definitely be satisfied with that, especially on a – contract that's probably larger than is good in game in real life i think he is pretty good um but let's see what can we get for our first here or is somebody going to give us a bottom oh chandler stevenson's not a bad option so i get a second and chandler stevenson uh stevenson would be good to fill out that bottom six forward role um that i was kind of looking to fill out earlier he's a 79 he's a minus 11 but he's got wow he's at, wait, is he playing third line ice time with some special teams maybe yeah i think he's playing yeah he's playing third line ice time with some special teams so we're gonna have to go manufacture our own trade so let me go ahead i'm gonna go find some skaters matching the block and i'll jump back in with you guys when i uh have something well, guys, unfortunately, we don't have enough cap space to really go after anybody uh, because of their contracts for next season. And I didn't feel like giving up an asset for um, th just this season. Uh, it just did, it just didn't make sense to me uh, because defensively, nobody's going to be an upgrade really over Myers that, you know, it doesn't deserve or that, that, that would be worth a first, I should say. Um I, you know, and I also just noticed that Farabee is got high top six potential. He's a minus two, so the fourth line is doing okay. It could be doing better. Um, Nolan Patrick on the fourth line would help it, but I don't want to put Nolan Patrick on the fourth line. Hopefully, he can figure it out. Uh, and guys like Couturier, who really don't fit anything but the first line. I mean, if I move Giroux down, like but that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that would just be kind of stupid uh, for me to do that. Moving a guy like uh, Voracek or Giroux down just does not make sense for our team. 
So we're not going to make any trades. I'm going to jump ahead to the postseason because we're most likely going to make the playoffs. I'll just let you guys know where we finish up. So guys, we made the playoffs and well, we did really, really well. Claude Giroux with 89 points. But the more impressive thing is the fact that we won the Metropolitan Division. 102 points is good enough for the uh, win of the division. Uh, and it is the second best Eastern Conference team behind the Tampa Bay Lightning. Who might I add, we played really strongly this season. Like we played well against the Lightning. I think we played them three times and we won two of them, uh, at least that I can remember. Let's take a quick peep at the stats. Uh, hopefully a guy like Nolan Patrick finished a little bit better than he was on pace for. And let's stick with forwards. Claude Giroux led the team by a large margin. Jakub Voracek with 67 points. Couturier with 51. So those are our best three. Uh, James Van Riemsdyk here. What's he? What's his contract? Seven million. Uh, it's a little bit of an overpay, but if he's going to get a plus 36 and help Giroux, that's fine with me. Nolan Patrick only finished with 27 points on that second line. So... He grew by one overall point. He's listed as a second line forward now. So hopefully um, in the playoffs, he'll step up. I've kind of noticed that a lot of the times that I do this, players tend to step up if they're growing. They step up in the playoffs. So if they grow from a third line to a second line or they step up, but hopefully that continues here. Kevin Hayes with 41 points on the third line. Listen, I, that's exactly what I want from him. It's worth his contract if he's going to do that for us. Um, Lindblom, yep, everybody else did fine. No other glaring issues. Let's go check the defenseman. We've got Gosh Spear with 64 points. A fantastic season from him. Niskanen with 28. Sandheim, Provorov all in the 20s. Uh, Provorov is now an 86 overall, so it was good to see that him playing in that middle pairing with Niskanen did really well. Travis Sandheim, I think, played on the first line, if I can remember correctly. Uh, I believe he did. I can't exactly remember. Um, but uh, Myers and Braun did fi fix their uh, plus minus, so they did turn it around. And then in goal... Holy shit, starter Hart with an absolutely phenomenal season. 923, 235. That should be good enough for the Vesna, unless somebody else had an absolutely bonkers season. Uh, so let's go ahead and check it out. It is Carey Price. Ooh, I, I you know, I still got to give it to Carter Hart. Um, point, he's got 0.001 uh, less in the save percentage, but he's got a 0.08 better goal against average. Plus, he had six more wins in two fewer games. So I would give I would give it to uh, Carter Hart. I would definitely say Carter Hart deserves the Vesna this year. Um, we're not going to have any other any, any other players near the top or trophy list. So let's go ahead up against Toronto. Let's check out their lines. We are listed as a contender. Hopefully we can get past Toronto's really good offense. I mean, if Carter Hart can continue to play like he has, I'll give I'll back us the whole way. But Nylander, Marner, Tavares uh, is a sick first line. But then their second line kind of falls off in the winger department. Obviously, Austin Matthews is insane. Uh, but the wingers aren't necessarily as good, but maybe he elevates them. Mikiev, Spezza, and Aberg, and then Clifford, Kerfoot, and Mulligan. So I think we have a more well-rounded team. Now, they definitely have the star advantage, 100%. Defensively, uh, a very similar-looking defensive core. It's it's pretty solid. It's not great. I would call it solid. Uh, and then in goal, they've got Frederick Anderson in 88. So I don't know, actually, if Starter Hart grew. <laughs> I'm going to call him Starter Hart all day. Uh, Carter Hart, I don't know if he grew at all. He's up to an 87. Okay, he's sick. He's elite. Love, I love to see the growth. You just love growth. Um, like we usually do here in these quicker videos, we're going to go ahead and simulate anything that is not um, a, an elimination game in the calendar view, and then we'll jump in for any elimination game. So there's one and one in the series. Don't lose this one. That's a big one. All right, let's go one more game, and we have an elimination game on our hands. We are up 3-1 in the series. Let's go ahead and simulate this final game hopefully game number five on home ice against toronto first period nothing happens shots are heavily in our favor though second period all right one one james van reemsdijk and kyle clifford so the depth of toronto's offense i would not necessarily call kyle clifford depth offense but he's a depth forward and zach hyman on that second line is going to score but jaku voracek just 40 seconds later is going to equalize for us let's go oh, man could you imagine being in that building you have a chance you get a little sad but then Voracek just 40 seconds later scores. We have, oh my God, that power play was what? Like five minutes long? Unable to capitalize. Are we going to see an overtime game? We are. Now here in this one, we are going to go ahead and with Tyler Pitlick, baby. I, I, I've, I've been on his hype train all season, guys. Him on the third line being such a good scheme fit and he just looks so well-rounded. Been on his hype train. He's going to eliminate the Toronto Maple Leafs in five games in overtime there on home ice so that is beautiful to see so we'll back out and go ahead and check 
Uh, who's our leading point getter? It is, well, Claude Giroux. I guess, I guess you probably would have, if, if you were a betting man, you probably would have bet on Claude Giroux to lead the team in points. Uh, and it looks like we eliminated Toronto faster than most teams got eliminated. It seems like the next team we play will be playing is the New York Rangers. Uh, hopefully we, yeah, yeah, we did. We we, you know, we battled them uh, late in the season a few times. Like I think we had two of our four games against them late in the season. Here we won them both. They were two humongous wins that help us helped us move above them and then win the division. Uh, so Panarin, Zabenejev, Buchnevich is pretty good. Kreider, Strom, Kako is pretty good. Uh, Chidel, Howden, Di Giuseppe. And so it's a weak bottom six. I got to say, 76s is not what you want to see on your bottom six. Uh, but obviously, Panarin, Zabenejad is a great one, too. Uh, they, again, have the star over us, but Claude Giroux is not that far away from Panarin. Uh, and our top six is pretty darn close. As far as defense, I'd say I I'd be willing to give us the edge. Tony D'Angelo is a great, uh, great, great simmer. Uh, I don't know how he does in real life. I've not been able to watch him enough, um, but hopefully he fits the hype train that uh, NHL generates for him every year. Uh, the rest of the defense, not too stunning. And, and then they still have Hank in goal, who posted a great, great series in five games as well. And then Shostyrkin is their backup there. Uh, Scratch, do they have anybody that to worry about? Definitely not. Okay, so... I'm backing us to win this series too. I would I would say that we have a better team on paper. Now it's the playoffs and the sim. Anything can happen. Uh, but let's go ahead here, get to game four first and foremost. Uh, we lose the first one. We win the next two, which is huge. We lost one on the uh, on home ice, but then we st stole one um, on the road. So three two and two nothing. Uh, we are up 2-1 in the series. Go ahead here. We, do we have a potential elimination game? We do. We are up 3-1 in this series here, guys. So let's go ahead, jump into the sim here, and see if we can get another five-game series. Tyler Pitlick, I'm looking at you. Are you going to carry us again? Well, not carry us. Are you going to save us again? First period. Holy crap. It's Faraby, Voracek, and Giroux. Uh, and for them, it's Di Giuseppe, Kreider, and Buchnevich. So their top six balled out. So did ours. Uh, Voracek and Giroux with a goal from the bottom six, Farabee and GD Giuseppe. So a very eventful first period. Neither goalie is having a great game. Which goalie is going to figure it out first? Second period. And it looks like Carter Hart figured it out where Hank did not uh, yet. Anyway, I guess one goal is not that bad. But Lindblom on our third line there uh, is going to go ahead and get us a 4-3 lead. That's beautiful. Always better to have the lead in the elimination game. Make New York really sweat. Put the pressure on them. Make them come after you. When, when it's working for you, you don't have to change it, you know? don't If it's not broke, don't fix it. Up 4-3 here with five minutes to go in this, and Jakub Voracek is going to score again. And, guys, we are going to punch our ticket to the Eastern Conference Finals. And, man, I think this is the best we've done in a first season uh, in this rebuild series. I think the first season of Vancouver was really bad. And then the first season of Montreal was not bad. It wasn't great. Uh, this is the best we've done in the first first uh, season. And we have a potential to face Buffalo or Boston. God, if we face Buffalo, I'm just going to laugh. Because I every once in a while, Buffalo just sims amazingly in the first season. I think they went out and got Sherratt. I was looking at some defenders, and I think they got Sherratt from... Um, Montreal but a game seven I would rather play Buffalo than Boston let's go Buffalo I'm counting on you I think they finished above Boston I think they nope 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 just kidding Boston finished ahead of Buffalo the left team is the home team out west it is Winnipeg San Jose interesting the fact that San Jose made it through who is gonna make it is it Buffalo it is Buffalo all right I'll take it not only because I'm a Sabres fan but I think they've definitely got the worst team than Boston uh the Boston doesn't have Jack Eichel but they also have Marshan Bergeron but yeah I'm freaking glad I know we don't have to play that we have to play this Skinner Eichel Reinhardt Cahoon Gergensen's Olofsson Johansson Oposo Simmons for Leek Larson Ellie yikes uh is this is oh my god Jack Eichel is carrying right now boys Jack Eichel literally is putting the entire team on his back <laughs> holy crap uh Darlene and Risto uh Montour and Miller and Yoki Harum McCabe so it's not a bad defensive core at all you'd like to see their middle pairing be a little bit better than that at least one of those guys in the mid 80s instead of the low 80s uh their first pairing with Risto and Darlene is a really good pairing but Overall, this team is definitely weaker on paper. And goaltenders, they don't even have Linus Allmark. I don't know where Allmark went, if he's scratched or hurt, or they traded him for Ben Shirat. But they don't have him, and they've got Carter Hutton, who's actually played pretty... You know, when Carter Hutton's hot, he's so good. But when he's off, he's so bad. 
So we'll see. Can we get by Buffalo here in round number uh, in, in, with a trip to the Stanley Cup Finals? I was about to say round number one. I was going to say game number one, too. Let's get to game number four, the element, potential elimination game. It is a potential elimination game already. After three games, we are up 3-0 with a 4-2, a 2-1, and a 3-0 victory. So let's go ahead here, get into the elimination game. First period. Ooh, Buffalo on home ice, Jack Eichel and Cahoon. You know, I got to say, just real world, the game aside, I really like the pickup of Cahoon uh, in real life. I really, really like him. So, Pittsburgh, I'm sorry if you liked him, but I'm really glad he's a Sabre now. Couturier scores our one and only goal, 3-1 to Buffalo. After two, it's still 3-1 to Buffalo, and Buffalo on home ice. I'm in the building. I can promise you that. Um, they do not want to get swept on home ice here, putting up a really, really good fight. Halfway through the period, we've shown no signs of coming back in this game. Not a lot of shots being put on by us either. And with five minutes to go, Lindblom is going to go ahead and score on Hutton. Are they going to choke it? Nah, Jack Eichel's not going to let them choke it, boys. 4-2, and that's how this one finishes out. Buffalo avoids the sweep. Let's go ahead and jump into game number five here. Hopefully, we can win another game in five. Another series in five, I should say. One more win is all it's going to take, guys. And we've punched our ticket to the Stanley Cup. First period... All right, we're up two to one. Co uh, Colin Miller goes ahead and scores, but Van Riemsdyk and Faraby. I'm, I'm liking Faraby, guys. I'm really liking our bottom six. I'm getting attached to this Philly team. I don't know. I don't know. I might be pulling for you guys. Uh, next chance I get. Second period. Oh, my God. Victor Olofsson by himself is going to score two on Carter Hart, and Buffalo gets a 3-2 lead and is hoping to force a game six back in Buffalo. They get a power play, which is not going to help us come back at all. Uh, I can't count us out because we did come mount a little comeback. And Nolan Patrick on the second line. There it is. Kyle Oposo is going to score on Carter Hart and it's 4-3 to Buffalo. I don't know how Buffalo is doing this with 90 seconds. Can we tie it? It's not going to be tied and we are going into a game number six. Strongly disliking this. Strongly, strongly disliking Patrick Lindblom. Okay, I got to bench. I got to move Patrick down. I just, I have to. I have to move him off that uh, second line if we are going to advance to play San Jose in the Stanley Cup Finals. Jakub Borchek is doing great, but Nolan Patrick, I just think he's not good enough for the second line. Um, moving a guy like Kevin Hayes up is not the end of the world because he's played well for us. He's listed as a second line forward, plus we still get the plus three for Nolan Patrick. I think I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it like this because I like Kevin Hayes. His stats are pretty good. Uh, like I said, I would like to get a goal scorer on this line. None of these guys really seem to shoot a lot. Um, anybody? Lindblom likes to score a lot of goals, it seems. But that would be a minus, big old minus two. And I don't want to do, I don't want to get a minus two. Um, so Lindblom, I, I, I love him, but I don't think uh, he's going to do anything good for us there. So we're going to leave that. We're just going to move uh, Nolan Patrick down a line. We'll sim to the next game. Come on, we were up 3-0. Let's not drop 3-3. Let's just, we, let's, we've got the scare. Buffalo's got their two wins. Let's get past them here, boys. Game six, game seven. I do not want to mess with a game seven. First period, Michael Froelich goes ahead and scores for Buffalo. Second period, and our only goal scorer comes from Kevin Hayes. Sam Reinhardt scores for Buffalo, and they're up 2-1. In a really close game, and Zemgis Gergensen, their second line forward, is going to score and make it 3-1, buff, 4-1 Buffalo. Ah, uh, Travis Konechny goes ahead and scores for us there. Oh, come on, boys. Let's mount that comeback. No. Buffalo gets a power play. Oh, we're going to have to face game number seven, aren't we? Are we going to choke this? Are we going to absolutely choke a 3-0 lead? Jake McCabe is going to add insult to injury. Oh, God. I really don't want to go into game number seven. I really don't want to have a game number seven. Holy goodness. Um... I'm going to trust Nolan Patrick. I'm going to trust him. He's a minus 11 in the playoffs. Screw that. I am not trusting him whatsoever. I'm going to do this and then this. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, oh, shoot, we don't really have a second line, second liner there um, that can work well. Minus one, plus three. I would like to keep the plus three. Faraby. Faraby up there. Lindblom for Konechny. It's a minus one. Oh, I'm getting crazy now, boys. I'm getting absolutely insane. Oh, it's a minus two. What, what if we flip that? 
move Giroux onto the second line. He's been great, but we need to just flip it around a little bit. farabee has been really good for us, too. He's a, I know he's a minus one. Pitlick's a plus seven. Jesus. Uh, yeah, if we move Lindblom up, there we go. He's been a plus four. Farabee down. I think I'm going to leave it like this. Van Riemsdyk, Couturier, Voracek, Lindblom, Giroux, Konechny, Lawton, Hayes, Pitlick, Raffle, Patrick, Farabee. Uh, defensive pairings look fine to me it's this bottom pairing again is just not looking great plus three up top is helping and i definitely think Provorov on that second pairing is helping we're gonna leave it like that game seven please don't choke it we were up 3-0 the last thing i want to do is get reverse swept it's really really not what i want to be doing right now first period here we go jaku voracek all right voracek he's actually took taking the lead took him taking the lead uh as for us as far as points are concerned second period there we go i'll take it come on carter hart you've had a bad couple of games i'm counting on you carter damn it we'd let up a goal less than two minutes into the period and it's 1-1 anybody's game the next goal could decide the series and it just very well may and it's travis sanheim for your philadelphia flyers we get a power play can't score though five minutes to go here in this period Game number seven, will we avoid the reverse sweep? Shane Gostas Bear is going to put the dagger. And there it is, 3-1 after going up 3-0. <laughs> we advance. Oh, Buffalo had four chances to come back, and they couldn't do it. I did like our. I did like the lines there. So we're taking on San Jose for a chance to be a one and done in this rebuild series. First season victory, maybe. Let's see what San Jose, I think on paper, they're not too bad. Hurdle, Couture, Meyer, LeBanc, Thornton, Kane, uh, Radil. Oh my God, their bottom six is horrible. They, they got Sabotka? Wow, good for you, Buffalo. I can't believe you got rid of Sabotka. Uh, but man, their bottom six is, this is not a great team. Defensively, Burns and Carlson is sick. But again, there's no depth. Uh, I don't want to overlook them. But they, oh, they also got Allmark. So they must have traded Allmark and... Um, and and Saboka. Wow, that Buffalo. Why? Why? Would, no, that's a Saboka's expiring. Just let it expire. I mean, I guess they got to the Eastern Conference Finals, which is a lot better than they did in real life. So, um, I'm not too scared of this team. It's the Stanley Cup Finals. Anything can happen. But, whew, okay, let's get to game. Are we? Are we actually the worst team? We are on the road. We are the worst team. San Jose must have been the best team in the West. As far as record is concerned, I think they were the second team in the league because we were third. So let's get up to game number four, which is an elimination game. We lose two, the first two on the road. Are we going to bounce back with a win? Oh, and it's elimination game, boys. It's elimination game time. Let's get the lines back to what they were. We are down 3-1. I do not want to spend all this time on this episode right now and get bounced right now. Um, we'll move Patrick back up. Oh, my God. He's so bad. He really, really just sucks. Um, Grant for Lawton. If we put Lawton up there, let's listed as a third line checker. He's not terrible. He's definitely not bad. Um, Pitlick. No. Okay. We're going to leave Lawton there and just just get Nolan Patrick off the ice, honestly. Um, we're going to stack our top line. God, it's not even that good of an opponent we're facing. Like, San Jose's team is worse than ours. Like, without a doubt. All it takes is one game, though. One slip-up, and we're done. We got to win the next three in a row, obviously. First period. 2-2. Two, two. All right. Voracek gets us started. Kane equalizes Hayes, and then fucking Zboka. 2-2. Two, two. All right. 2-2 two, two at the end of two. Come on, Philly. I'm believing in you. Come on, Carter Hart. I need you to keep the door closed. Shane Gostas Beer on the power play, and we keep the power play rolling. It must have been a five-minute major. Jaku Voracek gets us a 4-2 lead halfway through this one. It's looking good, boys. It's looking like game number six is on the menu. They keep giving them power plays, and Brent Burns is going to score on Carter Hart on the power play with two minutes to go. Nolan Patrick on the fourth line is going to get us that desperately needed insurance marker. And it's going to make sure that we're heading back to Philadelphia for a sixth game in the Stanley Cup Finals. Maybe I should not have trusted the lines that worked against Buffalo. Maybe I should have used uh, the lines that got us to where we were. <sighs> Maybe I trusted too much. But I got to trust now. Two games. One game at a time. One period at a time. One shift at a time. Let's go, boys. First period. 
Nothing, nothing. Shots are in our favor, though. That's always a positive sign. Second period sees us go up 2-1 with Kevin Hayes on the power play and James Van Riemsdyk there. Joe Thornton keeps San Jose tight, uh, and it's 2-1 after two. Come on, Carter Hart. You've been a god all season. Shut it down now. Five on three. San Jose gets a really long power play. Penalty kill does its job. Power play. Can you get the insurance marker? That's a really long power play, but they cannot get the insurance marker. And we just got to pray that Carter Hart can keep the door closed. Four minutes, three minutes. Come on, Carter. Two minutes. You got it. One minute, baby. Let's go. And we force game number seven after being down 3-1. We are going to a seventh game. Come on, we got to do it now, boys. It's now or never. I don't know if we're going to make it back to the Stanley Cup, I, even with improvements on the roster. You never know how the Sims going to go. A very similar team in San Jose. Let's go ahead, jump in game number seven. The last two games have been very, very good to us. First period, it's 1-1. One, one. Hurdle scores to open the game, and Pitlick scores to answer just uh, 20 seconds later. 30 seconds later, I can do math. Uh, guys, I am legitimately so nervous. My heart is actually racing. Second period. Nothing, nothing. Uh, Jane Gosh's beer with 30 seconds into the period is going to get us a lead. And Raffle scores as well on Linus Olmark. It is 3-1 now, but Logan Couture pulls San Jose back to within one. What an exciting first five minutes to this game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. We got seven minutes, six minutes, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. We're going to jump in, boys, and that should do it. I don't know if it's actually going to do it. It's going to be CPU versus CPU. We got seconds left in the game here. We're either going to watch us get equalized and go to overtime, or we're going to watch us lift the Stanley Cup. I will jump in with you guys at puck drop. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, 36 seconds left. Face off at center ice. Can we win it? We do. Gosh, a spear. It's going to get to four check. Just get it deep. He dumps it. There we go. The smart play. Good four check, but he is going to get it out. Vlasic now breaking up. Kane. We've got 25 seconds left. They're pulling the goalie. Kane around the outside. Gets cut off by Gosh, a spear. Four check picks it up. Finds Giroux. Gets it out of the zone, please. Oh, we got a two on one. Empty net. James Van Riemsdyk. Four. To Philadelphia, and we are going to lift the Stanley Cup in year number one. No changes were made, no trades whatsoever. It's just the presence of GM Ryan Rybred here this summer. Just sparked Philadelphia to the cup. Maybe they just needed that little bit of extra motivation. Just the the prowess of knowing that I, you know, I've won, I've done this before. I can build a team. They wanted to show out. I made one freaking roster move, and that was giving Nolan Patrick a contract extension for two seasons. Guys, Philadelphia might be one. This one, we we may since I didn't make too many changes, I may continue this one on Twitch. If you guys don't follow me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash ryebread3097. Link is in the description. Two, one, there we go. We are going to win. The Stanley Cup, guys. And like I said, I didn't make any changes, so this is still a relatively fresh franchise mode that we can continue on my live stream and hopefully make Philadelphia uh, into a true dynasty. I think things are set up here. I really like the way things look. Uh, without, you know, I didn't screw the team or the future, so um, changing uh, or starting a, a, a live stream series of this is, uh, is something I'm really interested in doing because one year, one cup, we can look to try and maybe go back to back on a live stream, but I got to get recording some of the other ones on that list. But guys, this was one heck of a comeback, one heck of a season. First two series against Metropolitan opponents. We pretty much handled our own division. That's what I want to say. We handled our own division for most of the season. We didn't really, I, there was nobody I was seeing that we lost to multiple times within our own division. We beat the Rangers a couple times. We beat Pittsburgh a couple times. Uh, we beat uh, the Capitals a couple times, and, you know, that's what you need to do. You need to take five of the eight points against your own division. That's usually going to do you well. And there it is, there he is. Claude Giroux is going to win the Conn Smythe with three goals but 13 assists, only 16 points. 
you maybe wonder if Carter Hart should have gotten it, being having as good of a season as he did. Um, I don't know what his playoff stats were, but if our leading point getters only got 26 points uh, through 20 or 16 points through 24 games, that's not exactly the best uh, stat line I've ever heard of. So I would rather, I, you know, I, I would think I would rather see uh, Carter Hart win the Con Smythe, but you know, nevertheless. A great season. Look at the. Okay, I'm. I'm sorry. Do you see the Philadelphia flan, fan that was just like chilling with his hand on his chin, like it was super boring? Like, dude, you just won the Stanley Cup. Everybody in orange in that crowd should be standing right now. Nobody is even caring. Like that one dude in the back just raised his fist, but no, nobody in orange is standing. Everybody in orange should be standing. I'm pretty sure everybody in the crowd should be standing too. Uh, you know, I don't think there's ever been a Stanley Cup Game Seven final like you know where everybody's sitting like i know I, we're on the road and it kind of sucks to win on the road and not at home but man if i was a philadelphia fan i would be standing i'd be cheering i would not uh i would not be sitting there just like oh man what a good game this just like ah oh, that was such a fun no i would be freaking lit dude i'd be standing up i'd be cheering i wouldn't have my voice i might have gotten two or three more beers from the concession stand who knows? Probably Ubering home if I'm the away, away fan. But um, a great, great series. Series number one, 4 1. Series number two, 4 1. Series three against Buffalo. A team, like these, the, the two teams we faced here at the end definitely did not deserve to be where they were. I don't think they were good enough teams. Maybe they just had good simulations and teams they played were just bad. They had a bad series. But Buffalo, we were up 3 0 and went to a game seven. And that was probably the scariest moment. Um, but then being down 3-1 here with Philadelphia and coming back in game number seven. Drink it in, boys. We've just come back from 3-1 and we are now Stanley Cup champions. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one.